In this clip, we're going to take a look at beginning our real world example, which is going to be creating the beard and some eyebrows. So to get started, I've created a little bit of geometry here. It's some beard geometry and eyebrow geometry. I did this just by selecting this mesh here, duplicating it, and deleting out the parts I didn't want. And then I just applied a flat gray shader. Now, I do want these to actually follow along with the mesh. Now, I could try to rig them, but that could be a little tedious, so I'm going to use a wrap instead. To do that, I'll select these two pieces of geometry, shift select the actual surface that I want them to follow. I'm going to come over here to my animation tab, deform, wrap, and I'm going to make sure, let me reset here, that exclusive bind is turned on. That's going to make sure that every vertex only binds to the vertex directly beneath it. And you can see everything follows along very, very easily. You can also now cache this out as an Alembic cache, then delete these out and re-import so that you don't have that history joining them. But I think we'll be fine for right now. Now, let's start our beard. I'll select my beard geometry. Let's go back to our modeling tab, generate, select the XGen editor, create a new description. We'll call this beard, and we'll call our collection human head. There we go. And we'll choose groomable splines and create. Give that just a second. All right, we have some splines in there. I'm going to give myself a little bit more space in here, but let me actually first hide that beard geometry. We don't actually have to see it. We'll go ahead and close off the outliner. Bring this out just a little bit here. There we go. And I'll go ahead and click here to hide those. And let's start by setting up the amount of guide hairs we want. So let's try maybe 75. I think that's probably going to be pretty good. That should be enough guide hairs to get our beard working the way we want it to work. So I'm also going to make sure, just in case I change this later, to use either nearest or interpolate. Interpolate tends to be a little bit smoother, so we'll use that. And I'll darken the base color here, just so it's a little easier to see against the skin. So what I can also do is set a default length or width. Now I advise you to go ahead and do this before using these tools we're going to look at in just a bit, the length tool and the width tool, because you really don't want to change these after we've begun painting. So I'm going to add a little bit of length here, just to kind of compensate maybe for the areas where I might want this to be a little longer. For the width, I can actually select the cards here, and we can see I probably want the width to be a little smaller, so I'll take that down to about there. I'm not going to take it too much smaller than that. I can still adjust the width in a variety of other ways later. And we'll go back to lines for right now. So for starters, I want to begin by setting up probably the length for the most part. And that's going to mean probably almost no length, or not even almost no length around the nose over here, and a lot less length in all these other areas. So let's go ahead and select the length brush. We've also not really had a chance to look at this brush yet. And you can see that this works with an increment and a goal. The increment is going to be the amount of increase or decrease every single time I click, and the goal is going to be the maximum length it'll achieve. So if I click here, you can see it gets a little bit longer. I, of course, need the opposite right now. I need this hair to get shorter. So I'm going to give myself a negative increment. I'll say negative 0.1. Now, that's not going to work right off the bat. I need to give it a goal length which would be zero. And you can see now I can begin shortening these hairs, and that includes taking them all the way down to pretty much nothingness. Now that doesn't mean they're gone. They're still there. We just can't see them, which is as good as gone for us right now. So what I'm going to do is remove the hairs pretty much from the areas I don't want them. Now I don't mind if I overshoot this a bit and end up getting rid of hairs I do want, because they're going to be pretty easy to bring back. For example, I know I don't want hairs along the lips here, so I'll just shorten those, and then I can always re-lengthen the other ones later. Now, notice I'm not doing the other side. We'll use the mirror tool in just a moment to help with that. All right, so I'm probably also going to want to bring a bunch of these down, but I think my tool might be a little bit small, uh, so I made it a little bit bigger there, and I think it might also be a little bit too weak. Uh, actually, no, it's doing a decent enough job, so I'll go ahead and shrink that down. I am losing it in a couple areas there, but we'll adjust all that shortly. For now, I'm just doing kind of a big kind of general pass over here. Go ahead and bring all of that down. And, of course, we'll want to comb all this, and 
we'll have to see how that looks along with kind of the shorter lengths that we're creating here. And I can go ahead and maybe get an even larger brush and put this now to maybe 0 0.05. And that way I can kind of start shortening the rest of this without it being too drastic. Now let's say I want to actually mirror this to the other side. For that we can come down over here and we can use these flip buttons. Whoops, I'm actually not seeing mine there, they're under edit. So the way you have to think about this is it's going to flip to the character's right or flip to the character's left. That could be a little confusing, but it's based on it basically being built along the Y axis or on the Y axis with the left side being on one side of the X and the right side being on the other side of the X. So if I want to flip this to another side, that means I want to flip this, which is his left, to his right. So I'll say flip to right and you can see that jumps over. Unfortunately, there is no symmetry tool that we can use. I'm going to grab smooth and just kind of blend this a little bit here. You can see that's going to help me kind of fix some of that weirdness that we have there right now, just to give it a slightly cleaner appearance. There we go. You can see it's added a little bit of hair on the lips, so we'll have to address that in just a moment. But I'll go ahead and flip to right again. And you can see slowly we're starting to get what we want. I'll grab my length brush again. I'm going to use an even smaller increment here. And I'm just going to come up here now and finish up these areas here. There we go. A little bit shorter there. We definitely want to, again, get this off of the lips over here. Now again, I'm not too concerned. If a little bit gets left on the lips, I can always remove that later on. Let me go ahead now and make this positive. And we'll bring his mustache back over here. Oops, let's give it a goal length of one. That way we can bring some of those hairs back in. There we go. Okay, I'll go ahead and flip to right again. And now I'll begin a little bit of posing. So I'll grab the pose brush. And we'll go and just begin combing the beard. Okay. Just bring that down there. At any point, I can hit flip to right just to see how that's working on both sides. Over here, I could see I probably am going to need to... Actually, it's not too bad. I'll have to remove some there, but bring back a little bit right there. Now, I'm not worried that it doesn't look super realistic right now. I'm just trying to get a general direction on it. I have all kinds of tools at my disposal that will help me get it to look a lot more realistic, such as noise. You know, we could also, even right now, use a bit of the smooth, maybe a little bit of elevation right there to push that back out. There we go. And again, I could also even use the smooth at the edges here. You could see how it kind of brings back some of that stubble a little bit, especially if I use the length to go ahead and knock it back. But anyway, this is what I'm going to spend a little bit of time doing. I'm going to go ahead and probably end the clip here. In between clips, I'll spend a bit of time, and I'll basically just be using my length, my pose, the elevation, and possibly a little bit of noise, although I'll save a little bit of that for when we get back, just to go ahead and finish off this sculpt. So I'll see you guys in just a bit.